I stumbled upon this very unique product. And, and I know my guest has heard this many, many times before. It's a bag of rocks. It's a bag of rocks, Justin. What am I doing with a bag of rocks? But it's so much more than that. And when I dove into the background and the research and the science of EMF rocks, it fascinated me because the bottom line is we are exposed to so much during the day and we're bombarded with these electromagnetic frequencies. And we've talked on the podcast before about what EMF frequencies can do. I mean, honestly, unless you're living in a cardboard box, you have heard some experts somewhere talk about what what we're being exposed to on the daily, from our computers to our phones, to our TVs, to the lights, to really when you walk down the street, when you go into a store, everything is Wi-Fi and Alexa and, and, and there's just so much bombarding us. And while technology is great, it can be really, really harmful to our health. It can hurt our thyroid and our hormone balance. You're going to hear some great stories today of how blocking those EMF waves and, and doing things for yourself with EMF rocks can actually help improve perimenopause, menopause, hormone balance, thyroid function, and the like. So I decided to bring on the expert so that we can talk more about this today. So Justin, thank you so much for coming on and thank you for diving into the science and, and figuring out what these amazing rocks can do at helping our overall health. So welcome to the show. We're going to talk about so much more today. Thank you, Dr. Amy. All right. So uh, can you just lead us off with how'd you get into, well, how'd you discover EMF rocks? How'd you get into this whole business, this whole arena? So I'm an athleticism performance coach. I started at athleticism.com almost 30 years ago, working with the amateur and professional athletes. And a lot of what I do is nerve fascia work, whole body, whole brain stuff for sports performance. Mm -hmm. What I saw was one of our strongest, fittest athletes coming in wearing wearable technology. And he goes, Justin, I have pain in my wrist. And I'm like, which wrist? I looked down, he's pointed right where his watch was. And he was wearing a smartwatch. And I looked at him, I said, no. I said, get the radiation off your wrist and take the watch off. And so he takes the watch off his pain goes away. And that was literally the aha moment for me where I wanted to make that connection a lot clearer and understand how we interplay with our environment and how our environment can really affect us. Yeah. I mean, that's so true. And, and you know, there's people out there probably listening going, oh, I have a watch on, I don't have pain, but it's so much more than just in that spot. We know, and, and you can speak to this, that exposure to EMFs are going to hurt us internally over the long haul. It might not be something that you notice that day, that week, or that month, but down the road, it would be something where you go, you know, I, I'm really starting to break down. I'm losing muscle. I'm the, my, my periods are horrible, or I'm going into menopause early or whatever it is. I'm gaining weight. And it could be that, that built up exposure that is actually creating symptoms and dysregulation in your body. Is that right? Definitely. It's more of a slow cook process, I think, overall, unless someone's really sensitive. And that was the time where, and it's still high levels, but that was when the Fitbits were being recalled back then. And so I had that awareness of really strong uh, high levels localized on certain areas. And so that's where I brought it into play. But you're spot on. Uh, this stuff is disruptive of our hormone cycles. And I, I have a crazy story to tell you about my wife. Oh gosh, please, please. Yeah. Yeah. So she was going through early menopause and just to your point, she would wake up for three months straight sweating every night. And then her menstrual cycle stopped for three months. And then until we brought in the grounding bags and created a coherence within our environment, everything normalized once the grounding bags kind of hit our home. So that was when I knew we had something really special with our EMF rocks, grounding bags. And it, it was just crazy to see that aging process and see time ticking, but then see it slow down. Yeah, that's amazing. And that's the only thing that she changed was- The only thing. Yeah. Okay. So my listeners can resonate with that because so many people have issues sleeping. And, and that's the thing, even if you're not in perimenopause, menopause, 
sleep is a big, well, number one, we know it's a big health hack. If you're not sleeping, it doesn't matter how many supplements or wearables, biohacking, hormones that you throw at yourself, nothing's going to work. You're going to have all the symptoms and disease is going to come on and aging is going to happen quickly. So number one, the one thing that we can do for ourselves is get better sleep. And again, we know from the studies out there, short of living in a cardboard box, you have to know that that, that constant Wi-Fi, that constant wavelength, that that electromagnetic frequency, and we all put our phones next to our beds, that that constant exposure is going to affect your sleep. So now you guys have Faraday bags, which I have one on my desk. I have another one right next to my bed that I stick my phone in at night. But then, you know, that's just the nighttime thing. But you're saying that you actually brought in the the grounding bags to put throughout your whole house and and also in your bedroom. Yes, definitely. Well, let me back up a little bit for the audience and share with them more about the interplay with us and our environment and how these non-native waveforms really work. Yeah, please do, because I'd like to to understand a little bit more too. It's like, you know, the surface le level facts, EMF is bad, but go a little bit deeper for me. Yeah, it, it's, it's a, there's a, this topic of invisible waveforms and people are kind of just been marketed that everything's okay. Hey, we have electricity in our homes. We've had it for 140 years. It's all good. But everything on the pie graph from diabetes, cardiovascular, Alzheimer's, suicide, infertility, they, they've all gone off the charts. And the one consistent thing is been non-native waveforms, electricity. And now they just keep getting closer and closer to us. So really we have this interplay between us and our environment that we can't ignore. And even if you don't see it, it doesn't mean it's not affecting you. I mean, we're not supposed to see air, right? Right. So, but then unless you're in LA and it's polluted and all. But <laughs> well, yeah, then you can see it. But no, there's particles in the air. There's pollutants in the air that we don't see, but we know they're there. Yeah, exactly. And these waves and particles travel through our air, which is ether or plasma. And that's how we're able to communicate. And those waveforms can be native or non-native. And the native ones are like cosmic shifts. So when people would adapt to atmospheric pressure shifts before we introduced electricity, those were all from native waveforms and cosmic shifts and solar flares. And now we have this introduction of non-native waveforms, which are all man-made. They're one directional waveforms or they don't work and they're really polarizing for our body. So the really the difference, Dr. Amy, is the native ones are unpolarized. These waveforms distribute equally in every direction. And they're called scalar waves. There's a name for them. And that's the fundamental waveform of every living being and object has a resonance to it. And they're on unpolarized waves. So to the contrary, all man-made waveforms, electricity or dirty electricity, or all these wireless signals, including 5G and beyond, they're one directional waveforms and they're 10 zeros faster than how we're designed to sleep Rev and optimize. So they're really disruptive to the body. They really are. And, and you start to wonder why we even have gone this far. I mean, that's a whole nother rabbit hole that we could go down, but it, it seems like technology is increasing faster than what we can protect ourselves. And that's why I'm fascinated by really your entire product line, the Faraday bags, but especially the EMF rocks, because it's something so simple and yet effective that it's like, well, okay, why don't we all just have this in our homes, next to our bed, at our desk? Why not? Because it is so simple. So are you ready to dive into the rocks themselves or, or, or is there more on the different wavelengths that you want to go into first? Yeah, let's jump a little deeper because I think for everyone to grasp this concept of creating a coherence with our environment, we have to understand how we interplay with it. Mm -hmm. So literally our environment could kill us instantly or it could allow us to thrive. And 
that's how we interplay with it. So if we're electromagnetic beings and we're basically capacitors where we absorb and give energy or essentially a sponge as well, uh, we're taking in these frequencies. So if we're blasting ourselves with millimeter waves all the time with our cell phones or wireless devices, laptops over our reproductive organs uh, and sitting on uh, batteries and electric cars, that's going to be disruptive for our biofield, which is which is our energy field, which then directly correlates to the chemistry in your body. And as Bruce Lipton will say, your health's indicative of your chi. So if there is a waveform in your environment messing with your energy field, which ironically goes out about six to eight feet, right? All mm -hmm. around us that's going to mess with the chemistry of your body. So that's a lot of what we're seeing now. And it can definitely disrupt the speed of the, uh, of the waveforms. Uh, it can disrupt the brainwave states when we're sleeping. So what happens is really we don't get into these deep restorative sleep. So these are kind of some of the baseline understandings of how we interplay with our environment and how it can affect us. Okay. That totally makes sense. Absolutely. So now that we know that, now can we move into? Yeah, the you want to get in the rocks. Because All it's right. fascinating. It's <laughs> fascinating. So I have, hold on, let me grab my bag. So you're so funny. So the the rocks, they're they're hand mined crystals. And yeah. we we actually we're looking to the most natural way to create this coherence. So everyone looks to nature to get grounded, right, Dr. Amy? Okay. That makes sense because we always tell people, go ahead and walk out, you know, yeah. barefoot in your grass. Don't be scared of getting your feet dirty because there's there's grounding that happens when you connect to the earth with your with your right. body, with your skin, without shoes and socks and all of that on. So yeah, that's a simple, easy, free biohacking tool that we give to people all the time. So it totally makes sense. Yeah. So everyone looks to get grounded outside. You, you do a grounding rod for your electrical electrical wiring in your home. We do it for earthing for our bodies to get outside and get that negative ionic charge mm -hmm. that feeds the electron transport chain of our body, which gives us energy. I mean, these are simple things. So I look to nature as well. That's what brought us to mining crystals mm -hmm. and bringing nature's resonance into our home. And the cool thing about the crystals is they're colloid crystals. So they're beautiful pink crystals inside. They have moisture properties with magnetic properties. That means that combination means they're exponentially stronger than shungite, amethyst, black tourmaline, all the other known crystals that have mag re magnetic resonances to create that coherence in our environment or that piezoelectric effect. Ours are stronger. So when you put a, a deep sleep grounding bag, when you put one on your bed, you'll sleep up to 60% deeper is what our doctor tests show, which mm -hmm. is phenomenal. And that's how medicinal the earth is. And that's how disruptive our environments in these electrical boxes of homes that we call homes. Yeah, very true. Very true. So now I, I mentioned I have this on like at the base of my desk because of all the EMF electrical things that are all around me, would it benefit me at all during times where I'm sitting here, let's say recording a podcast, I got the computer, I got the lights, I got my phone, I got the, the monitor, I got the everything. Should I keep this more close to me? Should I put it on me or is it as effective just being at the foot of my desk? Yeah. So what you're holding, you're holding our mini grounding bag, Dr. Yeah. Amy. So that's for, that's the personal for on the go protection. So that's for one person for a purse, a pocket, a guy's pocket uh -huh. and a, a kid's backpack. So okay. that would be, so that would be great for you. So I have one in my pocket. And then when I put my phone on the outside of it, I have a buffer between my phone and my body. Right. So right here. Yeah, so you could throw it in a purse and that that's where a lot of people keep it. Then the full size, what we want is to create that coherence with your environment. So the protocols of dealing with nature naturally, this is nature's resonance. This isn't a modified resonance. All the other products out there are like 
eating genetically modified food. They're modified resonances in your environment to overpower all the other modified resonances. That doesn't make sense to me. So when you bring in nature's resonance, we have certain protocols. One of these full size grounding bags, deep sleep grounding bags, you put it on your bed mm -hmm. or under your bed at the head of the bed, make sure it's touching the bed. You'll sleep up to again, 60% deeper. Five of these together will clear 2000 square feet of a home. You put them on the floor of your home, centrally located seven. You need seven together. If you have solar in your home, because they haven't figured out how to ground solar out, unfortunately. And then the big thing, my big button, if you would say, Justin, what's your biggest button? Uh, and I would say it's the electric car fad. Oh. And it's, a, it's a bunch of electric lies that's messing with people's uh, uh, thyroid more than anything that that we've ever seen. It's a it's a disruptor, a hormone disruptor, 18% lower testosterone for guys and girls driving electric cars is what our colleagues are doing blood work testing show. Oh. So we require seven grounding bags to clear those massive battery stressors. Oh my God. Okay. First of all, I'm going to repeat that stat for everyone. Cause I talk about the importance of testosterone all the time on this show for men and women, 18% less testosterone. Now that's already that that's just from the EMF exposure of you guys driving these little electric cars. That's not even counting for the pesticides and the xenoestrogen and the chemicals and everything else that we're seeing basically demasculinizing all of America. But uh, that's again, another topic, but that is, that is a crazy, crazy stat, crazy stat. So when you're seeing seven bags, you're just saying throw one in your car. We don't need seven in the electric car, right? No, you, okay. you do need seven, 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 seven yeah. in we, the <laughs> car. Oh my God. Seven That's how bags. bad it is. So we're, these are about one pound. So you need about seven pounds of the earth's resonance in the car to create a coherence. So let's just, let's just talk about that. So a 2000 square foot home needs six bags. One electric car needs seven bags. So that's seven how bags. bad it is getting into those things. That's crazy. It's, a, it's literally your, your cooking families. Like the, I, I'm not a fan of them at all. The Batteries are mined with coal, cadmium, precious minerals. They're using fossil those fossil fuels or what we call fossil fuels to to mine them. They don't get more fuel efficient. They're not a net zero on the environment. They're really bad for our health. They're a fire hazard. They're electric fire hazard. They they freeze up in cold conditions. I mean, I could go on and on. And then yeah. they don't last very long. So when the battery's dead, what are they doing? They're filling up our our mine our our, our earth with acid and dead batteries. So it's not a net zero in any way, shape or form. So let's just clear that for everyone. And now yeah. we know it's 18% lower testosterone. They could shut you down anytime they want to, when you're driving it, they've True. already governed the amount of mileage as you drive it. And so the list, I, I mean, literally I could write a dissertation on this topic. It's not, it's electric lies. So I, I encourage everyone to stay away from it. And now the Auto industry wants to do the hybrids because a lot of people aren't buying them because of these things. And they're, they still think that there's game in the electric world, but there's not there. It's just, it's not a, a viable option. There's no infrastructure for it to sustain it. Uh, and the list goes on and on. So they just uh, leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. This one conversation could have like three spinoff podcasts from it. <laughs> this is great. This is great. Okay. So six, six of the big bags, I have the one bag on my bed. So that's good. So I just need more bags so I can actually distribute them throughout my house or put them, like you said, centrally. And then that kind of takes care of everything. Yeah. Centrally is better than proximity wise like, or, or, or perimeter wise, I should say, where the more you can pile together, the stronger the resonance is. And so Dr. Bear Lando, He's a doctor chiropractic and he did a waveform test and he has these dual impedance antennas. So he measures your chi or any distortion in it. And he feels it's more reliable than a blood test for telling him specifically what's wrong with the person. And I love it because we're talking about waveforms and people don't talk about waveforms. They just look at the chemistry, but these waveforms are the first thing that's affected. So with that, the grounding bags, 
clinically passively treated up to 91% of the markers that were off on his testing, which is phenomenal. The lowest uh, person was 64%, I believe, and her, th her thymus was decharged. Okay. So if your electrical system of your body is decharged and depolarized, the whole body is going to be off. So if we would have actively tapped on the bag, we can use the grounding bags. Have you ever tapped on homeopathic tinctures to kind of wake up the properties? Mm -hmm. Shake right. it, like shake something up just to wake it up. Yep. That's what you can do with the crystals is you can tap on them and it wakes the properties up and then you could direct them to certain areas. So if you can say, hey, recharge my, my thymus, my teeth, my eyes, and my intestines. Those are the four areas that get decharged from EMF. So I work with athletes. Those are the four weak links for the body, like an athlete's would be a, a joint, like a wrist or an ankle. Yeah. So the other cool thing with the grounding bags is you can use them as a self-home care protocol to recharge your body battery. So just like getting out into nature, you can specifically recharge those areas that are decharged. And what happens is, is you not only do that, you flush your biofield of any stuck EMF, mm -hmm. which is we can hold on to things in our energy field. And then we 10 X our energies up to, so the grounding bags, not only the, the power of earth's resonance in your home, not only can help allow you to get into those deeper REM sleeps and dream and more lucid dream states to replenish your endocrine system, your, your thyroid and, and all the different areas that need that nutrients when you're sleeping, but you can use it to self heal as well. Wow. That's cool. So wait, how do we even know if something is decharged in our body? Well, is it just I, that, that symptomology sluggishness? Yes, definitely. I mean, the tired eyes and not waking up uh, on your mark, the afternoon fatigue, uh, the stomach just doesn't feel right maybe a little discomfort in there. Like those are super simple ways to know it. You know, if your energy's on and if it's off. Sure. Yeah. So, and then, you know, if something's just like your eyes are kind of just not working right. So just tune in. And this is the other part of my messaging. It's gone from working with athletes to understanding our interplay with the earth. And now it's, it's gone into this understanding how we interplay with technology and people are so into technology telling them how they feel and how they slept and how yeah. many steps they took get out of that meta universe that is not enhancing you have to listen to your body and know how you feel so that's really how i like to do it and if you have any questions just tap on the bag anyways or go outside and touch a tree go barefoot get into a body of water you're going to get those nutrients from the earth's resonance and mm -hmm. you're just going to feel a whole heck of a lot better. Right. Even if you don't know where your thymus is, you can just tap the bag and start putting it in different places. It's right? your upper chest below the thyroid. <laughs> well, that's what I was, I was thinking. Like when you said energy, I thought like just kind of putting it on your, right. even in your solar plexus, your heart area, that whole, yeah. Just to you can put it in energy. Yeah. You could put it anywhere, anywhere. It's it, the resonance of the earth, you can localize it. So we have athletes, they get a con contusion they get, a, you know, and they'll ace bandage it on their leg and it's, it's works better than ice or heat the next day. So any area you're feeling off on, just put it next to it. That is so cool. That is so cool. I mean, I'm learning some things that I can do with the bags now more than just laying them around the house. So, and, you know, I'm really happy that you brought up the point of, of kind of low energy, because that's a huge factor in so many of my listeners lives. And I would say weight gain and fatigue are the two biggest symptoms that I see across the board when I'm, when I'm working with people. And, you know, sometimes there's no clear cut answer. There are times where I'm like, okay, you know, it's not your thyroid. It's not your hormones. Everything's looking great. Are you, how are you sleeping? It goes back to sleep. How are you eating? Are you getting enough protein and all the different things that go into fatigue and energy? And sometimes we miss the, the non-visible to your point in the beginning, we miss the non-visible of, of what can be affecting us and what can be affecting our energy that we can't see, that we don't think of every single day. And this is one factor. 
that now you're kind of bringing into my mind. And I'm going, okay, now I need to check with my people that look all good on paper, but they're saying, ah, you know, I'm still tired. I'm not sleeping well. I'm, I'm dragging ass at 2 p.m. It could be, where are you during the day? What are you exposed to? What are you doing for yourself? And it could be as simple or as complex as EMF exposure. Definitely. And let's understand how our body battery works. So Eileen McCusick, he, she has a tuning fork uh, healing modality. And so she talks about the body being like a body battery where we get the negative charge from the earth. We get the positive charge from the unpolarized light of the sun. We get the minerals from the food and, and the air. Now, hopefully we get it from the food, right? And then we get it from water as well. And then we get the conductivity from the water. So if we're missing any one of those five elements, Dr. Amy, our body battery is not going to be fully optimized. And that's where we'll see those signs of fatigue. So yes, you're right. The first step for me that I think is one of the most steps for most every doctor recommending people is to just get out into nature and to allow the resonance of the earth to recharge our body and get polarity back in our body. And I, I agree with that. And the other thing I want to bring up too, is that you mentioned that I'd like to go deeper on, because this has been a point of frustration for me. You hear about, you know, other influencers out there, podcasters out there talking about the clothing or, um, so I'll, I'll touch on that example first, and then I'll go into my other frustration. The clothing is ugly and it's expensive. I have over there some $300 blanket that apparently I have to wrap myself in if I'm sitting at my desk to protect me from EMF, which makes it totally not conducive for video or for even using my hands on my computer. And right. then, so we have the ugly clothing, we have these wackadoodle blankets, and then we have the, the, the plugs that you can turn your Wi-Fi off at night. Well, here's the problem with with modernization of our homes, my security system, which I really like having on at night in a rural area, um, doesn't work unless it's connected to Wi-Fi. Right. So if I use that handy dandy little clicker to turn my Wi-Fi off at night, now I have no protection in my home. Yeah. So there, that's what I like about this. From a Faraday bag to the to the to the rocks, it's simple. I don't have to wear ugly clothing. I don't have to wrap myself in an ugly blanket. And I don't have to not be protected at night by turning my Wi-Fi off. In fact, I can be protected all day long with this. And it's simple. So yeah, yeah th those are my frustration points that I wanted to kind of throw out there because I don't know if anybody else has gone down the EMF rabbit hole of protection, but it's, it's almost like a pain in the ass. <laughs> it is. And so the, let me touch on a few of those points because I, I, you brought up a lot there. It's so crazy because first off, we can coexist with this EMF and that's what the grounding bags do. They allow you to keep that stuff on and use it. But again, it's converting a waveform from one directional to something that distributes equal in every direction. So you can coexist with this stuff. And I do first say, hey, it's great to turn off the electricity in your bedrooms and the Wi-Fi off and all those things. That would be the first step is, is to establish some proximity protocols for, for getting the resonance in your home and especially your bedroom as low and slow and as close to nature as possible. And then to have the grounding bags just keep feeding the nutrients. Uh, but if you really have to use these products and have to keep it on and all that stuff, like we do throughout the day, same as at night, they're going to have a, a coherence and create that really balance in your environment, which is huge. Mm -hmm. Now, the other part you mentioned is about the clothes and other products. So whether it's a shielding cloth or a Faraday tent, so Dr. Mercola, I love his book, emf but his product isn't that great. If I went home and say, hey, honey, we're going to sleep in this Faraday tent right now. She'd be like, no, no, no. You got the tent with the dog outside. Yeah, yeah. It just, it just doesn't work. So that's why the grounding bags work is you can put them in your room and you don't even know they're there, but they're kicking off that coherence and they're just doing what nature is supposed to do, which is help facilitate healing us. Now, some of the other products, when you're talking about uh, the man-made products like that you plug into a wall 
and they create a coherence and a field around you that can protect you forever and definitely that there's no way that works. Nobody does it better than God. Nobody does it better than nature. That's why we look to the crystals and they just work. And then as far as shielding, well, yeah, if you have a blanket over here, but what a fish is showing right here, right? right. <laughs> I mean, you, then that area is getting zapped. That's right where your thyroid is. So why, why would a shielding, if the only shielding makes sense when you're repelling away from something. So we'll often put our Faraday bag under a laptop if someone has it right over their reproductive organs because guys sperm absorbs 10 times the amount of radiation just like women's ovaries mm -hmm. so uh but we produce reproduce it then they don't so you want to repel it the other direction and then have a grounding bag on there so any extraneous signals there's a coherence so it, it's just like these tests that they do they don't test people having the cell phone right against their head there's an absorption rating that they recommend having it a few inches away from you when they're using these things. So those are a lot of the, the touch points that you mentioned. Got it. Okay. I'm, I'm glad that we kind of went over all that because like I said, it, it almost gets to a point where you're like, just forget it. So I'm not going to do anything. Just forget it because it's too complex. It's too confusing. There's too many gadgets. There's clothes, there's this, there's that. And that's why what I love about these bags is it's so simple. It's just so simple. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Another thing you mentioned earlier was just the the nutrients and such. And and I see us uh, as is probably one of the biggest times in our in our the life of a of humans is we're chronically dehydrated. And uh, yeah. And so it's it's not just all the other stuff that's going on, it, but this chronic dehydration messes with our energy as well. And I think our fascia gets dehydrated as well. And so uh, a colleague, Gary Lineham talks about the fascia being just the framework of the body and, and such a huge network. And when we can do these fascial maneuvers and then rehydrate it with silica from diatomaceous earth or get the minerals from, and, and get the minerals from Irish sea moss, mm -hmm. our fascia will start to heal. We get rid of fascial adhesions that are disruptive to the hormone system. And now we can start to self-heal a lot better. And, and now when we do take in the nutrients of the earth or from food or water or other supplements, our bodies will be able to accept them. But if there's blockages from the fascial adhesions and dehydration going on, it's, it's really tough to heal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been huge into myofascial release. And as you're talking about fascia, most people correlate that with just, you know, tight muscles bound up your back is tight, your neck is tight, everything is tight, but you actually brought up, you know, we have fascia covering every area of our body. And when we have those, that, that tight fascia that can even affect our thyroid, like around our necks. Right. Definitely. So one little maneuver would be to push uh, uh, the skin up and down over your neck. So you're stretching the skin out and that's going to open up that layer of fascia underneath your neck, right where your thyroid is. So it can start to get nutrients and oxygen and circulation. And that's how these things start to heal. So there's not only understanding our interplay with our environment, but understanding how our body works is how we're going to be able to help facilitate people self-healing as well. I love it. I love it. Well, any more stories? Cause I like your stories of how they relate to. Yeah. To, oh, to, I, to these. Yeah. Give me some more stories. <laughs> we could go on all day with stories. So this is huge one in Newport beach. I'm in Laguna beach. I live in that, uh, Southern California. And there's a residential community called the Port Streets. And one of the families in there, that beautiful home, it's a wealthy neighborhood. And they, their whole family was breaking down. And these are like former pro athlete parents. And the kids were just little hotshot athletes, all eating organic. Well, the mom calls me and said, Justin, my youngest just got childhood diabetes. And I said, uh, she said, is it something to do with our EMFs? Can you come test our house? So I've tested homes for about a dozen years. 
And so I said, sure, come, uh, come on over. She had the highest level of EMF that I've ever tested in a home. And it was because of the wiring. It's like an Aaron Brockovich deal where the wiring around her home was causing so much milligoss in her home. Mm -hmm. And then obviously there is a brand new smart home with Wi-Fi on and then the LED lights with transformers in them that kick off lots of dirty electricity. And then they had a transformer in their backyard that wasn't grounded right from the outside and that charged you know a dozen homes in their neighborhood. And so anyhow, poor kid got diabetes from the stressor. And the reason I say he got it from the stressor is because when they jumped on an airplane to get out of town and the mom and the kid had this new smartwatch on. Mm -hmm. And so the mom jumps on a flight. They were flying to Fiji to take a vacation to the beach. 200 point spike in glucose when the Wi-Fi turned on and everyone started using it and the kid gets a bloody nose. Okay. And then three fourths of the way through the flight, long flight from California to Fiji, half the people were still sleeping. The other half woke up, turn on their Wi-Fi. The kid's sleeping, he gets a bloody nose and it spikes a hundred points at the end. So this wireless signals, especially in an encapsule, messes with our glucose levels. And when someone's compromised, or like I mentioned it, like my wife, in those stages where you'll see the time slow with menopause, we can see what's going on. She had a meter metering it. She was looking at hers going, how did his glucose spike 200 points? He didn't consume anything. It's not all the food. That's the challenge. Look at your environment. Tom Cowan, he's an MD. He talks about if dolphins are swimming in the environment, you're not going to say, did that dolphin give that dolphin a virus or did their genes break down? You're going to say, no, who polluted the water? That's what we're doing. Our environment is our air. Who's polluting our air? That's affecting the chemistry in our body. This is a huge point. Oh my God. I have the chills right now uh, because my mind is going in a bunch of different directions too. I'm thinking again of, I can't tell you just how many patients I've had where we're looking at their labs and, and I'm like, okay, you know, what are you eating? Are you really stressed out? Cause your insulin is shot up. Your A1C is, has you in a diabetic range. No, no, no. I'm eating low carb, no sugar, not put no processed food. I'm like, well, you're doing something or you're stressed out. You're like throw on a CGM or something because something in your life is causing your glucose to spike. And A1C doesn't lie. It's a three month snapshot. Something is causing your glucose to spike. And now you've just, oh my gosh, like, like a wave of information that I'm going, holy crap, it could be their exposure. It could be this constant radiation and EMF exposure. What are, where are they all day? I mean, and even if you're not sitting at a desk, like I am right now with all kinds of EMF, like you said, you're in a home, you could be in a smart home. You could be driving in one of those dumbass cars that are electrified. And, and so that's just like, blowing my mind right now. I'm thinking of so many people that they have these elevated A1Cs, elevated glucose, elevated insulin. And we literally can't figure out the why outside of just, Hey, are you stressed out? Like at work or money stress or relationship stress or whatever. The other thought in my mind, and again, an another rabbit hole that we could open, but we won't go down it too far is, uh, why do you think so many people died during 2020 and 2021. Well, we tied it back to being metabolically dis metabolic disasters, you know, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, insulin resistance, all of that. We know that that was a known exacerbator of mortality during that time after being exposed to a certain virus. Uh, and, and we know that when we look at our children, uh, so many of them are obese, metabolically dysfunction diabetes at the age of eight, nine, 10. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe it's not what the parents are feeding them. Maybe it is, but maybe it's also because kids are on these all day long or they're on their iPad or they're in front of the computer or they're gaming all day long exposure. Yeah. Are you familiar with the book, The Invisible Rainbow? No, I haven't read that one. Okay. So everyone the Invisible Rainbow by Arthur Furstenberg. He categorizes the history of electricity and life, and he directly correlates 
any shifts in our electromagnetic blanket of an atmosphere to waveforms, whether they're cosmic shifts from solar flares before 1889 or man-made shifts. So 1889 was the year that we brought electricity into our homes. They called the flu the flu before that because it would fly in and fly out with cosmic shifts, solar flares, atmospheric pressure shifts. And until we brought it into our home, it was here to, then it was here to stay. And every major electrification of our atmosphere, whether it was 1918, Spanish flu, with radio waves, Hong Kong flu satellites, World War II, radar, 5G, the COVID last several years, those were all man-made radiation changing our environment that we're one with and our bodies were doing the best they could to adapt to it. And so that is why doctors like you and Tom Cow and all these others really have a, a better understanding of this interplay between us and our environment. Right, because we can see it every day. Just like the example, like I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of these patients. So we see it all every day. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's there's no scratch in your head that this electrification with radiation in our environment is disruptive to our energy. And cancer, suicide, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, which is type three diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and 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 suicide, uh, oh, oh, and and uh, cardio, cancer, suicide, diabetes, Alzheimer's, cardiovascular, and then infertility. Yeah. So those six have all gone up higher and faster than ever. And the one, again, the one consistent variable has been an increase in non-native waveforms in our environment. And they keep getting stronger they keep getting closer in proximity mm -hmm. and they keep getting sold to us as, as health. But we know from Dr. Martin Paul's work that the voltage gated calcium channels break down. So that lets positive calcium into a negative cell. Those are four big words to say, that's the gateway for your mitochondria to derive energy. So we know right out of the gates that it's messing with our energy. That's we know 2.45 gigahertz is the lowest bandwidth that destructures water. So we know it's dehydrating us because that's the minimum bandwidth of a cell phone. 5G is 60 to 90 gigahertz. We're 2.45 is the lowest, that's 4G. We're Rev, when we sleep, Dr. Amy, when we're sleeping, our brainwave state is one or below one to eight hertz or waves per second. The Schumann resonance of the earth, the healing pulse of the earth, 7.83 Hertz. There's a 10 zero Delta between us, how we sleep rev and optimize compared to what this rollout of non-native waveforms are at right now. This is, I mean, you're just blowing my mind today. Honestly, you're blowing my mind. Okay. Well, we have time for one more. So do you, do you have one more story that you can tell us? Cause I, I've, I've, I've gone off on your stories so far because they make me think and they jazz me up. So give me one more story before we go. Well, one of the biggest things that we see is when I actually, I'll do trade shows and I'll show people, they'll be like, hey, my, my eyes are off or I have a headache. They'll come in and they'll say, I have to leave. I cannot be here in this environment because there's so many people with Wi-Fi signals on and this and that. Right. And so, so what we do is we have them sit down and tap on their bags and we'll have countless people be able to stay at conferences and conventions and be able to hear the keynote speakers because they flush the toxicity out of their field. So I, I, yeah. I, it's, it's incredible to hear those stories. Obviously we get the sleep stories and, mm -hmm. you know, we sell our grounding bags through doctor clinics all around the country. That's fantastic. And the market's really spoken that nature can facilitate healing really well, but to see it in person and see someone really their eyes kind of light up again and, and then instantly flush and detox, like that's yeah. a powerful thing. And that's, that's the healing potential of the body. That's the healing potential of us being out into nature because that's essentially our nature.
Well, and I'm even thinking post-surgery. So the reason I got that, that blanket over there that I never use is I, I was consulting with someone. They're like, here's how you're going to prepare, you know, post-surgery. Obviously there's the protein and there's this and there's that and there's peptides and all that. But to protect yourself from those non-native wavelengths post-surgery as your body is trying to heal, it would just make sense. You know, Definitely. whatever area you're, you're getting operated on, you know, tap this, hold it on a couple of times a day, but also, you know, have it on you. So you're protecting yourself from the constant bombardment. So you can spot and then you can overall protect. Yeah. Surgery, I treat concussions. So concussions are huge. So a lot of the eyes will be so affected, the light sensitivity and to be able to give them their polarity back. It's tough to heal when you're decharged. It just really is. So if we, when we can recharge our body, identify the structures, create some proximity protocols, mm -hmm. do some fascial maneuvers, just stretch that neck up and breathe three in through your nose, then three in through your mouth. Those three breaths of each are key to opening up that, that fascial adhesions. And then you bring in the diatomaceous earth, the Irish sea moss. And then when you're inside, use the grounding bags to create that coherence or have a mini with you when you're on the go. Really, that's going to be the answer to help self-healing. Now we have a whole understanding of how we interplay between us and our environment and, and how nature's resonance can help heal. I love this. I love this. Well, we're going to have all the information and the links for people to get their own in the show notes. And you guys have provided us with a, a discount code for the audience as well. So thank you for that. But uh, again, I'm just going to encourage everyone, you know, re-listen to this podcast, take it in, recognize how powerful it can be to protect yourself in various ways, especially from EMF exposure and from these non-native wavelengths. And then, you know, let's, let's do what we can to protect ourselves. Let's do what we can to improve our own body's way of healing. Grounded by nature. That's get, your book. It mm. is my book. Get grounded by nature, everyone. Okay. I, we'll put a link to that too in the show notes so they can grab that. Yeah. So you've dropped a couple of different books on here that we all need to read. And then most importantly, you know, get the actual products, get the bags for your home, stop driving an electric car <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, just do what you can to heal yourself. So Justin, thank you. Thank you so much for jumping on here. I wanted the expert because you have the stories, you have the the knowledge, you have the the research behind you and you have the product. So I wanted you to talk about it. Thank you, Dr. Amy. Appreciate you having me on. Love it. Love it.